we see a huge amount of data and everything going on within mountain biking and over the years we've seen some different collectors and some different ways of looking at this information but you guys have brought out this new uh, piece of kit and uh, can you tell us where it's sort of developed and where it's come from? Yeah, so uh, the piece of uh, the actual device itself is known as a collector and it's kind of come from the need of uh, long endurance, uh, long distance races. Race organizers and event organizers need some sort of way of tracking athletes on course and that's sort of why we brought this about. But what's the key sort of traits to this? Yeah, so the big thing is, is it will uh, collect GPS data and then any sort of ant sensor. So uh, power meters, heart rate, uh, speed and cadence, it'll all uh, pick up that information and save it. And then the other key piece to this is that it also has a cell modem. So in addition to collecting that data, uh, we set the interval that it uploads the information actually through the cell, cell network. So it's broadcasting the information to our server in relatively real time. Such vast tracks out there that it's hard to keep a, keep a track of all the riders out there. So is that why you've been getting involved in it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, originally the device was used primarily for triathlon. The EWS races are very similar where you have a large group of riders, you release them out on course, and then you really don't know what's going on until yeah. they come back. So uh, with the, the live tracking feature, we're able to build an actual live map that shows all the competitors' uh, location on course. Wow. Uh, but as far as the live, uh, the live map goes, you know, it's a really great feature for um, just fans or even loved ones of the, of the athletes so they can actually log into the, uh, to the race and yeah. see, that, see that athlete's position on course. And you were talking about this will be available to the public soon, it's currently not, but what sort of implementation will that have for people? Um, yeah, so really the big thing is uh, it's, the idea is to make the, the device as easy to use as possible. It's a one button operation and you turn the device on at the there. start of a ride, uh, it collects all of your data and then when you turn it off it's, uh, it's all plumbed into all the, uh, the analysis software that you use every day. The other nice feature is the actual live track. So uh, we'll bring that over to the consumer side so that if your loved ones or friends want to know when you're riding and where you're riding, they will actually receive a link to that map and they can watch you on your ride and know where you are. Uh, we mentioned that it's a collector, not only is it collecting its own data, but it's also able to talk to other devices. So this is your bike here, what, what have you currently got on it? Yeah, so currently we have a, uh, an XX1 Eagle uh, power meter. So uh, if you so choose, uh, the device can just, uh, with proximity pair, you can just pair to the power meter. And one of the other most interesting things we've got is the, uh, up here, this little device, the measuring the forks. So, so this is ShockWiz. Um, it was developed by a man named Nigel Wade. And basically what it's doing is uh, it's a pressure sensor that's attached to the positive spring of a fork or shock, measure the, the pressure at 100 times a second, and from that data it can map the, the movement characteristics and then determine whether or not your suspension is set up correctly. So it uh, transmits on Bluetooth and uh, we have a ShockWiz app and once connected it kicks all the data to it and uh, displays it in uh, easy to understand recommendations. So increase or decrease air pressure, uh, same with rebound, low speed compression, high speed compression, it's all in there. So. Yeah, so really there, there are two components to the core race intelligence system. So you have the collector, which is the device that the athletes carry. And then on the website, you have corkrace.com, which is where all that information pushes to. Uh, so once we have the devices on all the athletes, we uh, come back and hop on our computers. And that's when we get going and uh, really start looking at all the information that's coming in and being displayed on the live map. Um, so the live map, the, the main purpose behind that is to show live location of the riders. It isn't until after the race is over that we're able to take all the GPS information that we've gathered from the event and do our comparison data. So as you look at these time plots, what you can see uh, from left to right is you can see the elevation profile, uh, and then at the bottom you have the distance traveled in meters, and then each colored line represents one of the riders that we're comparing and as they progress down the trail, uh, you can see that time gap either increase or decrease between one another. Uh, this is stage one for the men, and a really interesting thing to take away from it is about at the halfway point, or a little bit beyond it, you can see Nico Vullo's line dip really far down, like a straight line down, uh, indicating that there was likely a crash there. All right, in this particular graph, we're looking at stage three, and what you can really take away from it is right in the beginning, Jesse Malamed uh, secures himself a lead and holds it throughout the entire stage to take first. Just having fun and it's fast. I'm loving it. <laughs> it's sweet. I'm, I'm just as stoked as anyone else. Really, this information is coming in all day, and at this point, we're really just waiting for the racers to finish. Yeah.